In the darkest days of the civil rights era, militant racists sought to destroy the movement. Their tactic was terror. I still wake up hearing those screams. I still wake up at times seen by. Foot soldiers in the battle for equality were assassinated. I saw him lying there and screamed. Children were sacrificed because of the color of their skin. That picture of Emmett shows us the ugliness of racism. Those who died in domestic wars, not just foreign wars, they made America better. Those who marched and risked their lives created a new chapter in history. It was written with the blood of the civil rights martyrs. time of reckoning for America. By most accounts, it was a war. The stakes were nothing less than freedom. The Civil Rights Movement was really a, a struggle to ensure that America would live up to its promises of equality written in the Constitution and Declaration of Independence. On one side stood those who sought to abolish a centuries-old system of state-sanctioned segregation. These people literally put their bodies on the line to make our country something better. Many of these young people went into the lion's den. It was very dangerous. They clashed with an army desperately clinging to the last vestiges of white superiority. The black man got a chance and they called him Martin Luther King. We called him Lucifer. People was coming from up north, and I quote, they were stirring up problems with our niggers down here, and they didn't want this to happen. As in any war, there were casualties, but only on one side of the battlefield. We must never, ever forget that in our own country, during a short period of time, many of our citizens gave their lives in another war, in another battle. And these people, these martyrs, didn't receive any honors or medals, but they were fighting a war just as important as any war our country's ever engaged in abroad. As the death toll rose, the oppressed cried out for justice. But the brutality did not destroy the movement's resolve. It only stoked the fires of freedom. Every time the blood of the innocent was spilled. Every time a worker was martyred, it exploded the interest in our struggle. The beating and killing of our clergymen and young people will not divert us. We're on the move now. Yes, sir. Yeah. On April 4th, 1968, a shot rang out in the Memphis night. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., the leader of the civil rights movement was assassinated as he stood on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel. The bullet that entered his face and exited his back made King a martyr. A life of flesh and blood that had taken on mythic proportions had come to an end. But while King was the epicenter and conscience of the movement, there were other martyrs to its cause. Men and women who died in defiance, children who died in innocence. This is their story. An August Mississippi night in 1955, an old shack juts out of a cotton field like a blister as the air is electric with the ceaseless drone of insects. 14-year-old Emmett Till is in bed, 
restless from the heat and humidity. A truck drives up a dusty road. Two white men get out and enter the house. Inside, the owner of the shack, Emmett's granduncle, 64-year-old Mose Wright, protests. But the two men rouse the boy out of bed and force him into their truck. Emmett Till is on a journey from which he will never return. Till had come out a week earlier from Chicago, but he'd lived a quiet life with his mother, Mamie. Though some accounts characterize the boy as a prankster, a risk taker, his mother disagrees. He was a good boy. And when he wasn't looking after me and the things around the house, we had about three or four older people in the neighborhood that he saw to religiously. Till left Chicago in August of 1955 to spend the summer with his favorite cousins in Money, Mississippi. Population, 55. He'd been warned by his mother that things were different in the South. I told him to be sure to say yes, sir, and no, sir. That was one of the first things I told him. And then I, I told him, I said, if you meet a white woman, you do not look at her. You drop your head. I said, if necessary, you step off the sidewalk and let her pass. His mother's warning was prophetic, for it was an encounter with a white woman in a general store one afternoon that would prove fatal to Emmett Till. By some accounts, Emmett had walked out of the store and said bye, baby, to Carolyn Bryant, the shopkeeper. From a modern perspective, the incident may seem like nothing. But in the context of that time in the South, it was a potent incident that touched on racial and sexual taboos. Whatever Emmett Till's momentary indiscretion was, he might as well have lit a bonfire. Ever since the end of the Civil War, despite gaining their freedom from slavery, blacks have been decreed second-class citizens in the South. Segregation wasn't just a way of life, it was the law of the land. The so-called Jim Crow laws created a state-sanctioned racial caste system. Jim Crow laws is the name that came to apply to those laws, which was passed after Reconstruction, when whites began to take back political power in the South. And they passed laws that forbid a black person, for example, to go to white schools to ride on the bus without sitting in the back. Any number of laws that basically codified or made illegal for black people to exercise right that white people had. But in 1954, one year before the Till incident, the Supreme Court in the historic Brown versus Topeka Board of Education ruling made it illegal for school systems to segregate blacks. It set the South simmering. They want to throw white children and colored children into the melting pot of integration, through out of which will come a conglomerated, mulatto, mongrel class of people. There was a great fear put in white people by really the intellectual establishment of the South through its newspapers and speeches of its leaders that if blacks integrate our society, they're only going to be interested in white women. The South sought to cling to the traditions it had held in its glory days. Any change to that way of life made many Southern whites angry. No black would be allowed to cross the color line. So when the townspeople of Money, Mississippi, perceived that Emmett Till had crossed that line at the expense of the dignity of a white woman, it sealed his fate. After being abducted from his uncle's home, Till was taken by Carolyn Bryant's husband, Roy, and his brother-in-law, J.W. Millam, to a remote shack. Emmett Till died a horrible death. He was beaten so badly, his head was crushed. 
when I was gouged out. He was shot in the head. <laughs>